Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Tech Tree, and I've recently done a TED talk around semantic studying, where I discuss how everything is just concepts joined up with relationships. So it's just concepts joined together. So what I'm thinking of in this video is to actually show you a practical example of it rather than explaining the theory behind it like I did in the TED talk. So what I have here is this is how a fund works. Um, just like a general fund, it could be a pension fund where you have a board, um, they have a company, they employ employees, and they set up a pension fund uh, for their employees. They're known as the members who then elect trustees who then get some expert advice to say what the asset strategy should be and they recommend a manager and they all try to make money and there's compliance officers and all those type of things. So we have all these people and their various relationships with each other. And then what I've done is I have made I have made these lattices. So like with a manager running his fund, he would, you know, here's the manager, he's worried about his performance and his administration, goes through his product, his IT system, his capacity, um, you know, all the issues that he might be facing, monitoring with communication, filling in reports, duration, how many assets are management. You know, there's all these different focal points. And then I've also done one for the consultant recommending the manager. That's that one over there. And I've also done one with the trustees um, monitoring the managers. But what I want to do in this video is I want to do the investment strategy one. So this is, if I decide to show it to you over here, it is the expert who's normally the actuary um, advising on the asset allocation or setting up the investment strategy. So this link here, I now want to go into a lot of detail. So what I do when I make these lattices or these knowledge webs or whatever you want to call them is I just do a big like dump of all the various concepts and now what I want to do is piece them together. So I thought why not just record while I do this. So what we have is the investment strategy. Um, most important thing with the investment strategy is to know what your liabilities are and liabilities have certain objectives um, you know you want to meet liabilities as they fall due so you know liquidity is an important one um, liabilities might be more than the assets you've been given you might be promising um, you know 10 percent return every month or something crazy like that so you know growth will be another objective um, or like they say in a pension fund situation you want to protect the person's money just before they you know retire so stability is a very important piece of the puzzle. So, yeah, so from an investment strategy, you do want to keep an eye on your liabilities. Um, I mean, this whole thing is known as matching. Do I have matching? Yes, I do. There's matching. So this is this whole concept of matching your assets with your liabilities so that you can match them on certain things such as duration. Do I have duration and all of that type of stuff? Um, so sometimes I won't actually have the little thing, so I have to make a new one. So let's have to zoom in. So let's make one there. Duration. So okay. So why is duration an important thing to match? Well, because of interest rate sensitivity. So let's actually make another one over here. Interest rate sensitivity. Interest rate sensitivity. Okay, this is probably going to be a long video, although you guys will know that because yeah, YouTube will tell you how long it is. I don't know how long I'm going to be recording this for. Um, but let's just see how it goes. So we've got the investment strategy, important um, that you match it by duration, and that's for your interest rate. Uh, sensitivity. Okay. Um, what's other good thing to to match on? Another good thing to match on is liquidity as well. So what I'll do, even though that's an objective, it'll also come here. So you can see I've got my little um, arrows that I'll join. I can now join duration to liquidity as well as objectives to liquidity. So we can see liquidity, you know, is important in more more than one way. 
Um, also, a good thing to to match on is is currency. I don't think I have currency though, but well, maybe I mean that falls under matching. I mean, matching can do its whole whole little thing. Should we do Should we do currency on this? Let's do that as well. I just have to zoom in when I create a new one. Okay, so. And you'll see that in a lot of the times you'll have regulation that says you can't put too much money in foreign assets because they want this, this matching by currency. Um, I mean, I guess you could even match by liquidity portfolio as well. So liquidity is quite an interesting one. It's got quite a lot of uh, joining up. And the reason for that is you don't want reinvestment risk. So let's maybe put that in over here. Reinvestment risk. So what reinvestment risk is, oh, I have to actually make this smaller. Reinvestment risk is when, let's say you have to pay out in 10 years time, but your asset is maturing after five years. You then have to put it back into the market, but there is a there's the risk that the price would have moved. Um, unfavorably and so you have to spend more money so it's difficult to change the size of the font and explain a risk at the same time there we go um, so yeah liquidity is important for reinvestment risk currency okay let's see what else we've got here so you can see we you start building this up and you start switching it around and and doing all these things um, I mean, yeah, we could even throw in regulation there just to stay up with, with the currency and the foreign investment, but we'll move that one a little bit later. Um, where's allocation? Yeah, I think allocation is an important part. So investment strategy, you're looking at the liabilities, but you're also going to be looking at the whole asset allocation. Maybe I should actually put it here because that will be linking up with matching. Okay, so there is certain, um, I guess yeah, we can throw in the regulation here. You know, there's certain authorized assets that we can and cannot use, um, certain you know, restrictions, but we still want to achieve diversification. So those two things will contradict each other. You know, the more assets you can invest in, the better. Um, I mean, let's see what else we've got over here. Um, regulation will also tell us how much like reserves we need to hold. If we're going, say, very aggressively, sometimes we have to hold more reserves. Where if we go very defensively, we have to hold less reserves. But that's with some, some funds, not necessarily with all funds. Um, let's see, let's see. I'm looking for, I've got one where it says active or passive. There we go. Okay, so we also need to choose an investment strategy whether we're gonna go active or passive. If we're going passive, you know, what's gonna be the tracking error? If we're gonna go active, what's gonna be the active risk? You know, we then have to choose our manager. We then gonna to have to choose a style. You know, how's he gonna be investing? Um, are we going to have any limits or the limits can also come with restrictions um, you know what's our individual asset exposure or actually even just an individual instrument products can also come into that one over there as well um, I should maybe go each asset class first and then we have individual assets uh, tax is always, you know, you always get like a mark for mentioning tax. Um, risk budget's important. Um, asset manager, you know, what's his style going to be? Oh, wait, let's put style over there. No, I've already got style. So that is a duplicate. Um, mandate. Mandate is important. Um... I guess there's the whole governance structure. Don't we put that in? There's another one of tax. Let's take that out. We are going to try to figure out how we are going to do
do the valuation of say these individual assets you know what is the the governance behind choosing one what would be our various benchmark client I actually don't think we have to worry too much about client peer group risk can link up with the benchmark you know maybe we're trying to outperform them um, I mean risk and return these are like the two main ones that we always want to want to consider you know what is our our risk and return going to be um, party we don't have to worry about vehicle we can we can decide what type of vehicle it's going to come in as that will impact the tax okay so now look I want it all to be quite you know joined together but you know not just all over the place um, now I mean so this is the thing this thing e it evolves so it does take quite a bit of time and the fact that I'm recording it probably not the best thing because sometimes you just need to sit and like stare at it and figure out okay how are we gonna join all of this together um, we definitely know that investments are concerned with their liabilities um, liabilities have their objectives objectives can be either growth stability and liquidity um, we also know that liabilities have have duration and duration is important for whoops interest rate sensitivity and duration is important for liquidity and liquidity is important for reinvestment risk and I guess for meeting meeting payments um, so let me actually make another one let's make outflows because I mean, you know when you come to these questions they kind of like discuss investment strategy for 20 marks and you're like okay um, where do I begin but if you look here, if we have to talk about each little pointer, you know, I think we can quite comfortably find um, 20 marks. I mean, I think we're looking at around, yeah, there's around 20 bubbles here. If not, no, no, there's around 40 little bubbles over here. So we should be fine because at half a mark each, we will be able to answer a question if we touch on all of these things. So let's see how they all join up together and like I said some of them we can discuss more than once because you've got your asset allocation which needs to make sure that it can do matching with the liabilities and we see we must get matching actually hold on I want to use do I want to use here yeah. let's make it so that liability goes into matching matching goes into duration um, matching will also go into currency so we want to currency uh, I mean what we can even do now is make foreign assets and I mean the nice thing about this is this is kind of like dynamic studying in the sense that we can come and like just delete this stuff or rebuild it or something like that so we can see currency because that goes into foreign uh, investments which is very important when it comes to 
authorized assets. Um, I mean, also whether it's active or passive will also play a role with foreign investments. Um, and I mean, yeah, these guys all come come down to your overall risk. I guess this is called your risk budget. Do we have risk budget? Yeah, let's, let's use risk budget. Yeah, what is the total total risk that we're taking on here? Um, I mean, because there's also going to be market risk as well. I should probably rename this one to market risk and credit risk. Um, so yeah, we're going to have risk budget. And I mean, you know, currency will also come into risk. And then risk goes into, whoops, that's weird. Go into the risk budget. The tracking error will also be important for risk. Um, you know, how closely we track the tracking error, that's the index. Yeah, let me actually include index as well. You know, what index are we going to use? And I mean, yeah, with index, there's always the diversification thing as well with index. Especially here in South Africa where, say, an equity or even, I mean, the bond industry is also very heavy on government bonds. There aren't that many corporate bonds. So passive investing do have this problem with diversification. Although if you go active, you can get the active risk. Yeah, I think authorized assets is also going to team up with exposure. Kind of feel restriction is maybe a little bit. I mean, I'm basically saying restrictions and regulation. Or I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can keep them as separate things. Limits and exposure sounds a bit like the same thing, but hey. Um. So yeah, let's actually take limits out for the moment, keep exposure, <laughs> although maybe, keep that one there, exposure, I want to instrument, party, where's party, did we throw away party, no, because yeah, you will have on exposure limits to certain parties. But hold on, let's get our little arrows going. So authorized assets, we will have, they'll be restricted. Um, I guess I'll Yeah, one of the restrictions will be to limit the exposure and we're definitely going to limit the exposure to each asset class, uh, to instruments used and definitely to parties as well. Mm, I don't have that other one. Oh, let's use this one. Here we go. No way, sorry, I'm not putting that in. Although that we will have a we'll have our party. I mean I'm thinking should we bring restrictions? I mean reserves will depend very much on exposure as well. Which is why it's nice to have them there. Um let's actually have individual assets as well. 
so something like you know you can't have all your property in one big shopping center um, I mean that will link those guys up there there is a way to get I mean around like if they say you can only have 10% in equities and 10% in derivatives you can you know get a derivative that then um, you know, it's a synthetic exposure to equities. So there are ways to getting around restrictions and specifically the exposure thing. Um, same with, say, foreign assets. There's a way to get around foreign assets is to invest in shares in the stock market that have dual listing and have a lot of their profit in overseas territories. So there is ways to get around that. Um... Let's see, let's put in valuation. You know, how will the valuation be done? Will it be top down or bottom up? Well, that might be going into too much depth when it comes to an investment strategy. Investment strategy still is very high level um, type of thing. We will choose the benchmark though. I think the benchmark is an interesting one to have, especially when it comes to return. Well, I'm thinking, you know, both active risk and tracking error will have a benchmark that they will be accountable for. The benchmark for the active risk will probably be higher then for the tracking error of the passive, the certain index might be used as the benchmark. Active risk will depend on getting a manager. A manager will want to beat the benchmark. You can see benchmarks are a very important point. Um, I mean, yeah, even the benchmark will specify, the mandate, sorry, will specify what benchmark he has to do. And manage it to the mandate. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could even be peer group with the benchmark to see how everybody else did compared to the benchmark. Or the peer group can also affect just allocation in general. You know, if everybody's allocating in a certain way, you might want to see how they're doing it. Um, that actually could have quite an interesting impact on, say, diversification. You know, so if everyone's buying a certain share, should you also buy it to limit your peer group risk? But will that be reducing your diversification, will that influence your exposure? So you can see how all of these guys are very much you know, um, joined by the hip type of thing. Now let's get this one here as well. Okay, so you can see it's slowly starting to, to take shape. Um, Yeah, let's connect this one here. Our allocation has to you know, be with the right amount of authorized assets. Um, why is that? Because of regulation. You know, we want to fill out regulation. Regulation might also specify a reserve that we need to have. And I want to link exposure to reserves or risk to reserves. Something to reserves, because reserves does you know, come back to all of this. Mm -hmm. We've got a little hole there for 
how it's going to be done. Um, I mean, vehicle and tax will kind of go together. Uh, you want to just click style over here. So managers will have their own specific styles. So these are the ones we're not using yet. How are we going to piece them together? The limits are alright if we don't keep limits in. So how are we doing? It's not making a very nice shape though, is it? Hey? We're not getting a nice like pyramid or anything like we did for the other ones. Although investment strategy, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting, interesting one. I actually want to add in a few more little things. I also want to add in hedging strategy. I think that's an important one. Um, I also want to add in market capacity. Especially when you're dealing with emerging markets, market capacity can throw a spanner in the work when it comes to investment strategies. Um, I mean, that could even be quite quite up here. We can even put these guys over here, I think. Because allocation will depend, you know, if we've got that as it is authorized, but also, you know, is it actually available or, you know, does the market have capacity for it? Um, what is the regulation around, say, hedging strategies? We're allowed to use derivatives and they should be able to reduce the reserves as they can reduce the risk. It's interesting. So they team up here with risk again. And um, <laughs> funnily enough, market capacity might even mean that we have to go into foreign investments as well. So you can see this, I need to probably sit down and restructure this, this lattice because we've got some things that should be connected. But I mean, in a weird way, everything is kind of connected to each other. I mean, oh my gosh, we haven't even connected return yet. Um, let's see how we're doing. How are we doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, the two main things to remember is that we are dealing with liabilities and allocation. So it's the one thing that this lattice doesn't do is it doesn't let us see, you know, what is the most important thing. And unless you give it a little bit of a heading, you don't know to start you know, up that investment strategy. Mm. I think that's the best I can come up with at the moment. So like I said, these, I mean, those other ones, you know, I have spent a bit of time on them and I've, you know, made them all nice and perfect. But this investment strategy thing, I think I'm going to, I'm going to end the video off here because it's going to be very boring me just making minor tweaks. And let me go through some more material, maybe see if I can find a few more things to join up and, and connect it. But the end product might be completely different. This is just going to be, say, the first draft. But that's the whole thing. It's, it's dynamic learning. It's actually pulling pieces away, connecting it, reconnecting it. I mean, this is how our brain works. We've got neurons with the little connections everywhere. So this is like a... A representation of an actuarial brain out over here and then we then make the little connections um, I mean I also want to do it for for property which I'll do at a later stage property will be quite fun uh, you can see there's the different concepts that I have to make meet and then I even was doing it for the economic the economy I was saying you know if one of them goes up how does it affect all the other ones um, because yeah, there was no way to connect all of these with just arrows. So I am still playing with this this way as a study method, making these type of mind maps or you know whatever you want to call them. Um, this one's quite cute because it's got color 
made all the connections and now it's, yeah, it's going into each of those in depth but uh but yeah there we go i think let me end off this video i want to go have a drink of water my voice as you can hear is getting quite dry so let me end it off there thanks guys so much for watching and uh, yeah let me know if you enjoyed watching these type of videos of seeing me study you know in the whole thick of it or if you prepare the more I prefer the more presented type of videos with the presentations like i did in that beer video anyway cheers